This is interview number two um, with my interviewee, Megan Tyler. Um, the subject is anxiety, and I'm going to try and keep it based around a couple of subjects um, in anxiety. Let's just dive right in. So, first question. When do you think your anxiety started, um, but health-wise? So, when um, when did you start worrying about health, and when did that anxiety come about? Um probably when I was about 17 um it just sort of started all of a sudden there was no sort of warning for it It just started um quite severely so yeah probably about 17 Mm. about 17 years old yeah yeah so um how did you know that that it was sort of like about health what made you think about it um, it was more, um, I don't know, I was, it was more the relationship I was in at the time, um, I was just under so much stress, and then I just kept thinking, you know, what if this happens on top of all that, mm. um, and it, you know, I just kept, it was always the what if, what what if I go blind, or, or what if I have a brain tumour or you know any little niggling pain I had I thought of the worst if I had a pain in my chest I thought I was having a heart attack if I had a little pain in my head a little headache I thought you know I had a bleed on the brain or you know it was just absolutely ridiculous I think it started I was given uh, some medication I can't remember now what it was for but they gave me double the dose in one tablet of what I was supposed to have and I took it and I had a problem with taking tablets already and I took it and my heart felt like it was going a million miles an hour I nearly passed out um I had to be rushed back home it was just terrible and I just that I think is what triggered it for me yeah um yeah, I was misdosed. Probably, you know, it happened. It was, you know, it's no one else's fault. But um, that brought up like yeah. the first panic, and then after that, yeah, it's just yeah, panic I after I was panic. Die, yeah, really, I really did, and that happened. Um, yeah, so that that that's, that that was when I was about seventeen. So that's that's what started it. Okay. Um. So let's go on about. Let's go on to the social anxiety. So. Um, when do you think you started to get social anxiety? Um, maybe um, younger than that. I always felt like, although I did have a lot of friends, I always felt like I had to impress everyone. Yeah. Um, and I was always worried about people judging me. Constantly, yeah. like if I heard someone talking, even if it wasn't about me, or I couldn't hear what they were saying properly, or someone was laughing, I always thought it was about me. Even though I was, you know, friends with most people, it's just something that was always in the back of my mind. Yeah. And I used to like to keep myself quite neutral. I didn't like to. I didn't like to be in one group, although I was in one group with with my best friend it was almost like although she was my best friend I had to sort of try and be in the middle you know and please everyone and I think think that's where it started yeah don't want to be judged I get that yeah that that probably triggered mine to be honest the bullying and things um yeah okay so um let's move on to question two so question two is when getting anxiety and getting a panic attack, how would you cope with this? Um, I have, like, different coping mechanisms. I just... Sometimes I will call my best friend or I'll ring my mum. They're the two main people. Or I just kind of sit down and think... Because whenever... Whenever I have a panic attack, or whenever I used to have a panic attack, I used to always worry about passing out. That was the main worry I had, was passing out. Yeah. Um, so I just ring my best friend and my mum, and I just think, you know, this has happened before, I dealt with it then, I can deal with, I can deal with it now, you know? Yeah. I mean, having a panic attack has got to be quite bad, because obviously, medically, it's, 
it's you gasping for breath and mm. and panicking. It's, it's and... you feeling like like you can't breathe. You know, it's 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 horrible. And that and and because your adrenaline goes up and it's got nowhere to go, it makes you feel like you're gonna pass out. Yeah. And it can make your vision go blurry and your heart pump. Like I used to see the throbbing in my eyes where I was so panicked. Yeah. And then I used to feel like my heart had stopped because it was just going so, or like it would stop and then it would like beat really quick and then stop and beat really quick. Yeah. And then you're worried about your health again. Yeah, and I'd get ringing in my ears and like everything would go muffled and I'd feel like I used to try and take a deep breath in, but the more I tried to take a deep breath, the more it was getting worse because I couldn't. Yeah. So I was constantly catching my breath. I felt like I was like drowning almost. Yeah. Well, it Without is. It's, it's got to be horrible when when you're gasping for breath as well. It really yeah. has. Feels like you're like suffocating. Choking. Yeah, suffocating. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That's what it feels like. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Um, so this one is, how do you cope with your social anxiety when you're not at home? So, so when going out, for instance, to I don't know the supermarket, you know. Well, going into the supermarket, obviously, you know. Yeah. So, so like when I used to go into the supermarket and stuff, um, it got to where I couldn't go in there anymore. I like my partner at the time had to go in there and do it for me because I just couldn't. But like, I'd walk in there. And because I was so terrified of passing out in front of people, I don't know, I just, all like, I used to feel like almost either I was getting smaller or, like, the supermarket was getting really small around me. Yeah. And although I was, like, in a really big supermarket, I would feel so claustrophobic. There's no windows. And you've got all these people going past. And then I used to, like, at the time, I didn't realise that it was just... Well, I did realise, but you don't, almost, when you're in that moment. I thought it was just, you know... I thought I was going to pass out and I used to just have to drop everything and say I've got to go to the car and run to the car as quick as I could hmm. because I was just so terrified of passing out like it would be in front of everyone and everyone would start looking and I'd just like I could I'd, I'd start to feel my heart beating like really quickly or not normally like missing a beat I felt like it was and then I'd start to feel like really hot and like clammy and then I'd start not being able to breathe. Yeah. Start feeling really like headed like I was going to fall to the floor. Mm. It was just terrible. And I just had to go into the car and just shut shut the doors and just lay back on the seat until, it, until I'd ridden it out. Yeah. You know? But yeah, that was probably the one of the worst parts. What about your social anxiety when going into a supermarket? How did, like, because obviously you were panicked about going to the supermarket, about um, social anxiety um, and passing out. Um, what about when when you just see other people around you in a supermarket? What What do you think? Yeah. It, well, it, it was almost that that worried me because I don't know these people and I didn't want to almost make myself I didn't want to let myself be vulnerable in front of other people that I didn't know mm. and then you've got all these people looking at you and it was almost like seeing what you're buying and, and looking at how you're dressed and, and worrying that they're talking about you yeah, judging you judging me yeah and it was that that sort of made me panic almost and I just couldn't do it Mm. Um, but yeah, no, it was definitely that 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 side of things was 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 hard. I don't, I didn't, I, I didn't want to let myself be vulnerable in front of people that I didn't know. Yeah. You know. Yeah, strangers. I didn't want to be the talk of the town. You know. Yeah. Okay, let's go on to question three then. Um, how do you think you cope with your anxiety now when you're worrying about your health? Um, I cope with it a lot better now. Um, better than what I did. Mm. Uh, um, yeah, like, a lot better now. Like, before, I couldn't leave my bedroom. Well, I lived in a flat with my partner, but I couldn't go there anymore. Mm. And I just had to stay in the bedroom all the time. I couldn't eat certain things, or my mind would say, even like little things like, if you drink that water, it's going to 
silly things that's going to go to your brain and and your brain's going to bleed or you know like irrational things yeah but at the time i believed it i was almost like blackmailing myself not to eat or not to drink convincing yourself yeah even though part of me was like stop being silly it was like there's another person that wasn't even me going but if you do that you're gonna die yeah um and now i could have a lot better a lot better um you know i've moved away from home and, and I wouldn't have been able to do that then. So, yeah. you know, now I've moved out of where I used to live and, and the town. I feel a lot more free and a lot more... I'm older now and I know that I can deal with things by myself without having to have my mum and dad there to tell me. So... You know, it's, it's my self-reassurance. What do you do then? Um, so, obviously, you, like you say, you self-reassure. But so, for instance, um, when you worry about something, if you get, like, a, a chest pain, how would you cope with that like differently to how you used to cope with it before panicking like mad and um i just i don't know um, I, I, I'll, I'll sit on the sofa make a glass of water sit on the sofa do something to occupy my mind so that mm. it's not going a million miles an hour like, i'll put my favorite show on or i'll go through facebook or i'll ring my mum or my best friend or you know things like that to get to get my mind off of what I'm worrying about but would you divert my attention would you go to the doctors would you try and get it sorted if it was something that you were quite worried about try and yes I would but I mean try and make rational decisions yeah yeah whereas before I used to go to the doctors every other day like literally I'd be on the phone to them every single day booking the nearest appointment even the little things like the say I had a pain in the back of my tongue I'd go on to google what does pain in the back of your tongue mean stroke that's it I'd be straight on to the doctors trying to get an appointment for that day or the next day you know it got to where my doctors were like like me and my doctor are now like friends you know because I used to like go and see her every other day mm. and she grew to know me to know me you know to know that she'd ring me back even after surgery she'd be like it's okay Megan it's just panicking you're gonna be fine it's nothing to worry about mm. you know and I used to go there every single like at least three times a week for like two months yeah. to that point um so yeah now now I try not to go <laughs> Um, to the doctors as much. Unless it's uh, an emergency. Unless it's an emergency, yes. Yeah, unless it's an emergency, then of course. But no, I just I, I, I try and reassure myself and, and do my little techniques that work for me. Yeah, you know? sitting on the sofa, grabbing a glass of water, calling a friend or family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically. Okay. Um, what about social anxiety now? How do you think you cope with that? Better, a lot better. There's still little things, like if I'm walking up to the shops on my own, I like to be on the phone. Yeah. Particularly, you know, to my best friend. She's always like my safety blanket, you know, and um, we've always been like that, really, since school. And although she's not living in the same area as me, um, if I call her, I feel almost safe. Yeah. I can hear her voice, and her voice almost calms me down a little bit. It's reassuring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, where we've been in each other's lives, most of our lives, it's almost like a normal thing now, you know, if one of us is walking up the shop, we'll call, call the other one, you know, so... Yeah, it's good to have a, a good bond with someone like that, who understands yeah. it as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. All right, let's go on to the last one. We've got the first part. So, um, do you think anxiety will affect your future um, when it comes to worrying about your health? Do you think you can move past that completely? Um, um, I or, don't think I'll ever move past it completely. Might be a good thing that you don't. Yeah, because all of us should have some sort of worry and awareness more... more not worry but more awareness of of our of our health it's just that before i let it control my life 
and now I've got that awareness, but it's not always in front of me. It's more besides me. Like, you know, if, if you, I don't know, walk in front of that car, you're going to get one over. But it's not, if you eat the apple, you're going to have a heart attack. You know, it's rational thinking now. Yeah. Instead of just me trying, not trying, but subconsciously winding myself up, blackmailing myself all the time. Yeah. So I don't think I'll ever be over it, but it doesn't control me anymore. I'm in control of it now. Yeah. And it is a good thing to worry about your health sometimes. You, yes, you need it to. Is. If there is something yeah. going on, if there is a chest pain or you've got a, a bad foot or a bad leg or a bad ear or pain in the yeah. ear, you know, then it's always good yeah. to be cautious. Yeah, of course, yeah. Better safe than sorry. And uh, last one then. Um, what about social anxiety for the future? Um, I think I've, I've, it's still there. Mm. I still think, oh my gosh, they're talking about me. But I think I've got almost, not, not that I don't care, but I've sort of said to myself, well, they don't know me they don't like me or they want to judge me then that says more about them than what it does about me definitely you know, and that's that's their prerogative yeah they want to judge me exactly that's, that's the kind of person, person they, they are. are we all judge people all the time you know yeah secretly secretly yes yeah. <laughs> secretly <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right but yeah okay all right, well, let's just leave that there then. I think that is pretty much everything I need, hopefully. So, end of interview. Thank you, Megan. You're welcome.